Well, they say that love makes the world go round. If it was our love, it would have ground to a halt a long time ago. It's the love of God that maintains our world, sends his reign on the just and the unjust alike. And we are here on a mission to share with people the love of God. How do we know that God loves people? Well, the love of God, our Savior, towards man appeared in the incarnation. And of course, John 3.16 explains that the love of God was what drew the Savior to Calvary to die for us. And so here we are with this opportunity to share that love. And there are a couple of encouragements in Jude 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Like my old dog who kept himself in the rays of light that came into our living room, especially in the winter, he'd work his way across the room, making sure that he was in the sunshine. And so when we grow cold in our hearts toward the Lord, we need to make action. There's no question that God loves us, but are we enjoying that love, right? And so Paul says to the Thessalonians, now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. So here we are with this mission, and John says to us, whoever has this world's goods, 1 John 3, 17, sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? In other words, we have practical opportunities as we see need around us to manifest, to minister the love of God to other people. People are desperate for love, and they're looking for love in all the wrong places. And we have the secret. We know the source of love. And so I trust that a couple of little stories will encourage us. I, I talked recently about a gospel tract and the power of a gospel tract to influence people. Some years ago, I thought about writing some tracks that didn't look like tracks. They'd give people a happy surprise. And uh, because sometimes people think a gospel track, that's propaganda. And so I made these little, very small, trifold tracks. They were called Just a Minute because it just took a minute to read them. And they're published by Gospel Folio. And one of them on the outside said, I'd say thanks a million. When you opened it up to the second panel, it said, but you're worth more than that. And it talked about the fact that the Lord considers a soul to be worth more than the whole world and how valuable we are to God and how far he was willing to go to rescue us in the giving of his son and how much he loves us. Well, I have never had a negative response to that little tract. And I remember Brother Arnett McEntee before he went to heaven. He used to love to hand those tracts out. And one year he was out visiting his daughter, Kansas City area, and he had gone to a restaurant and given out one of those tracts. Well, about a year later, he was back in the area. And he left the same tract with a tip and he was making his way out across the parking lot when this young lady came running out after him across the parking lot. And she was shouting, you're the man, you're the man. He said, what man? She said, you gave me one of these a year ago. And she said, it touched my heart and I showed it to the manager. And the manager operates three restaurants. And he was so impressed, he made photocopies for all the employees of those three restaurants. And Brother Arnett had this wonderful opportunity to share the gospel with this dear woman, and it seems that she had put her trust in the Savior. It doesn't take much in this cold world to give people a little of heaven's warmth. It's so shocking. It's so different than what everybody else has because the love of God is selfless. The love of God is unconditional. 
and the love of God is for everybody. I can say with absolute confidence, God loves you. And I think this is a wonderful thing. Now, there are some Christians who don't believe that, that he only loves certain people. But the love of God, the scripture says, is for the whole world. And God offers this. And we have the privilege of inviting people to come. Now, there are some people who don't appreciate the love of God. I spoke to a waitress one day and said, has anybody been in today to tell you God loves you? And her response was, well, why shouldn't he? And I said, well, I've done a lot of things that really, I'm amazed that he loves me. But I'm glad he does. And people need to understand that God doesn't love their sin. He hates their sin. But the story of the cross is the place where God both demonstrated his hatred of what we have done and his love for who we are. He wants to love us. He wants us to let him love us. Many years ago, I was traveling by plane, and I gave one of those to the flight attendant. And about eight months later, I happened to be back on the same flight, and there she was. And after the breakfast was served, she came over to my seat, and she leaned down, and she took her ID card, which was in a plastic case in a, with a bolo around her neck, and she turned it over, and there was the tract. And tears filled her eyes, and she said, you gave this to me eight months ago. I carry it with me wherever I go. And when I have a hard day, I take it out and read it again. And I remember that God loves me. I tell you, folks, this is the real thing. And so we have opportunities when we see need to love people for Jesus' sake, to show people a little sampling of the love of God. And if we do, I am convinced that this cold world will be brightened up by many people. In working in the prisons, the number one issue, I've heard this over and over again, men who have done horrible deeds come to the end of themselves and they get down in their cells and they say something like this, God, if you can convince me that you still love me after what I've done, I will follow you for the rest of my life. And God does. One man said, I can't explain it, but my cell was filled with warmth and love. I could almost feel the arms of God around me. And I knew at that moment, in spite of my sin, God loved me. His life was transformed. People's lives are transformed. Listen to these beautiful words. When the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. That's how the Apostle Paul to Titus describes the gospel. The kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. May it be a motivating influence in our lives. The love of Christ constrains us to plead with people, to stop fighting him and let him love them into heaven and into his eternal family.